Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I got a story recommended by so many people, it might be a record. It might be a record. A civil asset forfeiture case that's all across the news. Many news organizations are covering this. This version is from NBCNews.com. Highway robbers, how a trip to buy farmland ended with police taking all his cash. And that is exactly what happened. A civil asset forfeiture, a man going to buy some real estate with cash. He had it all taken by the police. A Vietnamese immigrant and his business partner are fighting to get back their money, which is more than $100,000, seized by the police in Oklahoma. Rick Shapiro wrote this story. The businessmen were from New Mexico. We're driving along I-40 in Oklahoma back in April at night when a sheriff's deputy flipped on his lights and sirens and pulled over their vehicle. The two men were on their way to a hotel in Oklahoma City, and they planned to there spend the night before heading out in the morning to close a transaction on a 10-acre plot of farmland they'd agreed to buy for $100,000. So at 2 a.m., a county sheriff's deputy is peering into their car, and the man says he actually was not speeding. We didn't understand why he pulled us over. So he's from Albuquerque. Uh, He's a Vietnamese immigrant. He's a father of two. Now, they had no way of knowing at the time, but the two were about to begin an hours-long ordeal They'll leave them minus their money, but searching for answers. Their experience highlights the controversial law known as civil asset forfeiture, uh, in which police can confiscate a person's cash or other property, even without bringing criminal charges. The deputy asked the two men for their licenses, where they were going, and whether they were carrying any money. So, driver's license, please. Uh, Where are you going? Have you got any cash on you? Have you got any cash on you? Now, I'll admit, I've been pulled over a couple times in my life. I've never had a police officer ask me, am I, you know, am I carrying cash? And I'm not sure what business it is of theirs, but they asked. So they had a large amount of cash in the vehicle, which is $100,000. Of course, that was the money they were using to buy the property. Now, here's the deal. One of the men does speak English, but with a very heavy accent. The other one speaks almost no English at all. They told the officer they're going to a hotel, and yes, they have cash on them. The deputy says now that he suspected they were involved in illegal activity. Illegal activity. A criminal background search would have turned up one of the men had been convicted of growing marijuana in California in 2017. After a second uh, officer arrived at the scene, the men were driven to a police station and interrogated for several hours. Deputies emptied a backpack and suitcase where they found the cash... They then tore apart the car looking for something else, but they turned up nothing else of interest, nothing else to indicate a crime, no evidence of anything. All they found was the cash, okay? So the man told the interrogators that he had saved the money up for years and was planning to use the land for farming. They asked him what crops he was going to raise. He said he hadn't figured that out yet. And he goes, they kept saying, this is illegal money. This is illegal money. Your money is illegal. He said, well, I then said, okay, prove it. We didn't do anything illegal. Well, of course, the man doesn't understand how civil asset forfeiture works. See, if you're new to our country, I need to explain this to you. Uh, The police can pull you over and take your stuff and say it's illegal. You have to prove it's not. You might say, Steve, I came to America thinking that America had these interesting rules that protect you and your rights. Yeah, we do. But civil asset forfeiture is this gigantic exception to the rule. The two men were released, were never charged with a crime, were not even issued a ticket. They weren't even ticketed. But the county sheriff's office did not return their cash. Court papers filed by District Attorney Michael Fields says the money was seized because it was intended to be used to violate drug laws or it could have resulted from illegal drug transactions. So the interesting thing here to notice is that they're saying the money is either the result of a crime or was about to be used to commit a crime. So... It's possibly a past crime, but maybe a future crime. And once again, we're in that dangerous territory of future crimes. The men are now fighting to get it back. Adding insult to injury, they contend that the amount of money confiscated was actually $141,000. The sheriff's department says they only seized one thirty-one. dollars $10,000 is um, short, missing. 
The man says, now I have to prove I'm innocent. And they're the ones who illegally took my money and basically stole some of the money too. He's pointing out that he's saying the sheriff's department took all this money and then someone stole another portion of it. But it's bizarre that you have to talk about different levels of theft because they stole all the money and then someone stole some of the money. The court docket contains no records detailing the traffic stop or the seizure, and neither the sheriff's office nor the district attorney's office agreed to comment when asked by news organizations. Among those surprised by the turn of events is the man who was set to sell his land to the two gentlemen. So NBC News actually tracked down the person who was going to sell them the land. And he said, I was shocked when I heard of the confiscation of their money. He had met with the men a few days earlier. They'd drawn up a contract to sell the property. And the contract says it was going to be $100,000. NBC News saw a copy of the agreement. So the story that the man's going someplace to buy property kind of has some support from other people because there's a person who says, yeah, I was going to sell them the property for the amount of money that they said that they were bringing to do that. So they seemed like very nice and intelligent business people, said the seller. Now, the seller wants to remain anonymous here because he's worried, I'm sure, about backlash from somebody. He says, I feel bad for them and the situation. But as NBC News points out, what happened here is not that unusual. Federal and local law enforcement have broad authority in many parts of the country to seize a person's property if it is suspected to be linked to criminal activity. And of course, property could include cash. Civil asset forfeiture allows the authorities to confiscate items like cash and cars, even without charging the people forced to give up their property. And I've said this before, that if they had a legitimate reason to pull these guys over, they would have ticketed them. They could have ticketed them. They didn't ticket them. And if I was the prosecutor, I'd say, all my officers, guys, the police officers that that come before me, if you pull somebody over and take their stuff, be sure to write them up for the underlying crime so we at least have something to make us look better here. Because you pull somebody over, you don't even give them a ticket, but you drag them to the police station for a couple hours of interrogation and you take their cash saying it may be used in the future to commit a crime and you want me to go into court on that one? The sad part is that the, apparently the authorities have got no problem going into court on this stuff, but that does look a little weak. So defenders of this practice, it's a vital tool in fighting drug traffickers like those who are going to buy farmland in Oklahoma. Um, critics across the political spectrum argue that it violates constitutional rights and disproportionately impacts minorities and low-income people who are more likely to be profiled police and less likely to have the resources to challenge the seizures. Now, here's the deal. The amount of money seized here is either 131 or 141, depending on who you believe. But this man whose money was taken, or these gentlemen whose money was taken, might have the resources to fight this. And I hope they do. Or maybe somebody like the Institute for Justice will pick up this case and go with it. But $100,000 or $131,000 is certainly enough money to make it worth your while to go after. Brad Cates, former director of the Justice Department's Asset Forfeiture Office during the Reagan administration, said billions of dollars are taken yearly from citizens who are never charged with a crime and are not afforded any of the due process provisions of the Constitution, such as a day in court, presumption of innocence, right to counsel, and an impartial jury. And that's because they have this fiction, so we call it, where they say, oh, your money doesn't have any due process rights. Your money is an inanimate object. See, we didn't harm you. We harmed your money. That's, that's actually the basis of how they get away with this. So far this year, local law enforcement agencies confiscated more than $1.3 million for people driving through that county, according to an NBC News review of court records. At least 58% of the cash seizures involve minorities, uh, with Asians making up 23%, black 19%, Hispanic 16%, white people accounted for 26% of the forfeitures in that county. Meanwhile, the county is 75% white. But a lot of these are travelers passing through the county. It's like a tax for driving through the county. Uh, Only 14 out of the 31 cash forfeitures resulted in criminal charges, and that would be 45%. So less than half of these cases actually result in any kind of criminal charges. And um, this is a major problem. I've been complaining about this pretty much ever since I've had a channel here on YouTube. I've had this channel now for seven years, by the way. And um, this is a major problem. The issue here is that the government makes so much money, and it's easy money, that it's hard to get anybody to stand up and go, oh, we should stop this. However, if the people, you and I, 
the voters, if we complain about it and gripe about it, and if you've got a congressperson or a, you know, a, a legislature person that you know or can get in touch with, let them know how you feel about this. Because this is the kind of thing that I think there's enough of a groundswell on this that more and more it's going to come up, be publicized, and it's, it's going to end. I'm convinced of it. But it's going to be a difficult fight. And there are some states around the nation that have done away with it or modified it or really, really pulled it back. Anytime you get movement in the right direction, it's good. Okay, it's got to keep moving the ball in that direction now. However, the feds, the federal government also needs to stop doing this. So there are states, for instance, where they've pretty much done away with civil asset forfeiture. However, the feds in those states can still do it. That's a problem. So we need to get rid of this at the state level and at the federal level. It's crazy when you've got two guys driving through Oklahoma going to buy a piece of farm property. And there's somebody at the other end of this transaction waiting for these guys to show up with the money so he can sell them the farmland. The police pull the guys over, presumably because it's late at night, never explain why they get pulled over. And they ask him, do you have any cash on you? Do you have any cash? And here's the weird part. Normally speaking, the average person going through life is only asked for cash by a stranger when it's a panhandler. Got any money? You can have a dollar? You know, you're walking down the street in a big city and, and somebody walks up and asks you for money. Well, it turns out there's two groups of people who ask you for money. Panhandlers and cops. Cops in Oklahoma pull you over late at night. Where are you going? You got any money on you? You got any money? Now, I know some people are going to say, Steve, shouldn't have told me I had the money. Do you really think that would have stopped this from happening? They tore their car apart. They would have found the money. And they take them back to the station for a couple hours of interrogation and then come to the conclusion that they either had committed a crime or were about to commit a crime. Make up your mind. Seriously, do you have any evidence to support that? Because if you did, you'd know whether it was a past crime or a future crime. And when you have them saying something as silly as they were about to commit a crime or may have committed a crime, you realize they got nothing. They got nothing. But they still took the money. And so the money was more than 100000 And it was either $131,500 or $141,500. The cops say one thirty one. These guys say one forty one. And that's another problem, of course. Because remember, civil asset forfeiture means that the agency that seizes the money gets to keep most of it or a large chunk of it. And when they seize the money, who really cares if all of it makes it back into the room where we keep all the seized money? I mean, some of it kind of evaporates. So what? So it's a crazy story. It keeps happening. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. So NBCNews.com ran this version of the story. Rick Shapiro wrote it. Highway robbers, how a trip to buy farmland, ended with police taking all of his cash. And here are the people who sent me this story. Robert, Barry, TJ, Boyce, Bill, Jane, Steve, Edward, David, Ronald, Johnny, Thomas, Michael, Kyle, Scott, John, Cliff, Megan, Isaac, Jonathan, and Walter. Thanks, everybody. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Hearts deadened by the weight of things cannot feel truth. Throats choked by the dust of things cannot speak truth.